Hello and welcome, welcome, welcome. I am Dr. Jack and for this video we will start off by taking a brief look at the digestive tract and then take a deeper dive into the gut biome or look at the healthy bacteria that's within your gut. And we'll talk about topics like how the gut biome works, why it's so important to your health and wellness, as well as what you can do to make it better or worse and what to look out for to tell whether or not your gut biome needs some attention. And so join me as we take a deeper dive into the quote unquote forgotten organ and talk a little bit about poop. So if you're kind of squeamish talking about poop, you've been warned, but we're just going to talk about it a little bit. So let's get into it. Before we get into the nitty gritty of the video, I do just want to point something out to the viewers of this channel. Um, at times I tend to talk a little bit fast and I apologize for that, but just so you know, you can control under the settings how fast the video goes or you can slow it down or speed it up. And if you're watching it on a mobile device, if you tap the screen of, in the top right corner of the video, there will be three little dots. You can push it there and then you see the playback speed there and you can adjust it there. If you're on a laptop or a computer, then it's basically under the little settings or the little cogwheel looking to, um, icon at the bottom of the right hand screen of the video. So hopefully that'll help you guys out. Again, I apologize. I do at times tend to talk a little bit fast, but uh, hopefully that will help you out in the future. So getting into the content of this video. So why is the gut biome or the gut in general referred to as the quote unquote forgotten organ? Well, the gut actually has a ton of metabolic responsibilities and oftentimes we tend to forget that it does all that it has to do so it doesn't really get the respect that it deserves at times. And so hence it's sometimes referred to as the forgotten organ. So what exactly is the definition of the gut biome? Uh, it's also referred to as the microbiome and it basically encompasses all of the microorganisms that reside within the gastrointestinal tract. And so this includes everything from bacteria, to fungus to viruses that are there and all of it has a important role as long as it is within balance. You see when we consume food so we throw food in our mouth the mastication or the breakdown of the food begins in the mouth with various enzymes and then goes down your esophagus and into your stomach where additional acids are added and it breaks it down even further your stomach introduces it into your small intestines and then from there that's where the bulk of the nutrients are absorbed and then it sends it on to the large intestines and the large intestines is where the majority of the liquids is actually absorbed out of the contents of the food you have eaten and concentrates it into poop so that you can defecate it later and go about with your life. So along this entire process, the bacteria actually play a crucial role in metabolism as well as cellular function and what gets absorbed into your bloodstream and ultimately into your body to be used for various purposes. And these bacteria, they help with things like um, production of vitamin K as well as other various B vitamins and these microorganisms are termed the quote unquote good bacteria. There's over a thousand different types of bacteria residing within our gut and you actually want that type of diversity because your gut's health is actually dependent on that diversity where each one of these bacteria basically keep each other in check so that they can perform whatever function they need to perform. And just some other random facts I came across. If you were to take the weight of all of the microorganisms along the gastrointestinal tract and weigh them, it will weigh anywhere from two to five pounds and the human brain weighs on average about three pounds. And there's over one trillion different bacterial cells within the gastrointestinal tract and within the body there's trillions of bacterial cells. If you saw my previous videos I mentioned how we are made up of more bacteria cells than actually human cells. Another interesting fact is that a lot of people don't know Know, but the gastrointestinal tract actually produces anywhere from 75 to 90 percent of your body's own serotonin. So what is serotonin? Well serotonin is a quote-unquote feel-good hormone and people that are clinically depressed typically lack that. Serotonin does things like regulate appetite as well as sleep on top of regulating your mood. So the history of your gut bacteria and where it comes from it actually starts in the womb. Scientists have discovered that it has to do with your placenta and various microorganisms passing through that and already starting at that point and then as you're being birthed into the world and you pass through the vaginal canal assuming it wasn't a c-section you're introduced to even more bacteria along that canal and then assuming also that you're breastfed that is also a significant source of the original microorganisms that will colonize your gut biome. And then obviously as you grow, the various foods that you eat will make up ultimately how healthy 
and how diverse that gut biome is moving forward for you. So in a normal healthy gut, the various cells that are there actually end up controlling what is admitted into your body, and it's all very tightly regulated. However, when you have an imbalance due to various reasons that we'll discuss here shortly, that creates a situation where it actually becomes unhealthy for you. When that occurs, it's called dysbiosis. And in dysbiosis, it has been found in various research to lead to all sorts of health issues and affects all kinds of systems within your body. The systems such as the digestive system, the metabolic system, as well as the immune system, your hormone system or endocrine system, it is otherwise known as, as well as the neurotransmitter system. And neurotransmitter is what neurons or nerve cells use to communicate with various cells within the body. And this ultimately leads to problems such as mood disorder and anxiety, depression, changes in pain perception, as well as it affecting your cognition and causing fatigue. So within the digestive system, this leads to symptoms such as gas or bloating, constipation, reflux disease, or diarrhea. And you also end up with things like inflammatory bowel disease or gastritis, which is inflammation of the lining of the stomach. And as far as autoimmune disorders, those are things like rheumatoid arthritis, psoriatic arthritis, or ankylosing spondylitis. You also see increased food allergies as well as food sensitivities. And this is partially due to the fact that you get these partially digested food particles entering the bloodstream when they should not be entering at that time. And this is actually the basis of the leaky gut theory. And that might be a whole other video about leaky gut. Uh, there's quite a bit of research behind it and it's actually pretty interesting. But the whole theory is that you have a leaky gut and you have all these toxins as well as partially digested food particles entering the bloodstream, making us ill and causing all kinds of health and wellness issues for us long term. And you also see increased risk of various types of cancers and also decreased nutrient absorption, which ultimately leads to vitamin and mineral deficiency. And lastly, you also see weight gain. You see, the bacteria within your gut actually break down fiber that you consume. It breaks it down into short chain fatty acids. And short chain fatty acids have been found to help regulate fat metabolism by increasing the burning of the fat as well as decreasing the storage. And it's important to keep in mind there are two types of fiber. Uh, one of them is insoluble, and that's more stool softeners uh, used to bulk up the stool when you're constipated, and soluble type, which is water soluble. What happens here is that it mixes with water and it creates a viscous gel-like substance that slows down how fast food is released from the stomach, but it also decreases appetite. And it does this by interference with the appetite hormones like ghrelin or ghrelin. And there have been several studies showing the link between daily fiber intake and the level of belly fat or obesity that occurs. There was a interesting study conducted on mice where they took twin mice and one of them was lean and the other one was obese. They took the gut biome of the mouse that was obese and transferred it into his twin which was not an obese mice. When they did that the mouse that was lean ultimately started to gain weight and became obese. My interests also lie in the gut biome because there have been studies showing a link to pain and there was a fibromyalgia study where they took artificial intelligence and was able to predict the chances of someone having fibromyalgia like symptoms based off of purely their gut biome. So they would feed the artificial intelligence, the deep learning, the various bacteria that were found within the gut of a patient and it predicted with 87% accuracy whether or not that individual would actually suffer from fibromyalgia. And so now what they are doing is looking at it to see whether this is also seen within things like people with chronic headaches that they cannot figure out why it's happening or idiopathic neuropathy. Uh, idiopathic just means that we don't know for sure what is causing it and neuropathy is just essentially small fiber nerve damage uh, that presents in like the hands and feet as burning and stinging and all kinds of weird sensations like that. Uh, typically you see it in diabetics as well as people with chronic low back pain and why some people seem to have back pain that is out of proportion to what is actually seen for their given pathology or injury. And there have been so many other studies linking the gut biome to all sorts of things like inflammation. And if you are so interested, I highly suggest checking out my previous video on chronic inflammation to learn more about how chronic inflammation leads to so many health issues for you long term. 
And again, it's been looked at for obesity, as well as heart disease, as well as how it impacts our immune system and insulin resistance. So what causes dysbiosis? Well, like a lot of health issues, it's tied to lifestyle. So anyone that abuses tobacco or alcohol, as well as always undergoes a lot of stress or has very poor sleep and doesn't really exercise that much. Our diet, obviously, if you eat a very poor diet, it has a lot to do with it. And the Western diet is actually notorious for wreaking havoc on the gut biome and the balance that it requires. Because the typical Western diet actually is very poor in fiber and is very high in sugar and saturated fats. So you combine that with, your, uh, with our sedentary lifestyle and it's no wonder why our health is constantly getting worse and worse, especially as time goes on. And we can't talk about dysbiosis or disruption of that balance without also talking about the usage of antibiotics. And so if you watched my previous video talking about CBD and how it's possibly a new form of antibiotic and how there are societal and medical issues in regards to the expectation and overusage of antibiotics, this has all ultimately led to not only super bugs that are resistant to antibiotics, but it has also led to complete disruption of the gut biome. Because when you take an antibiotic, it essentially wipes out a lot of the good bacteria and sort of allows this imbalance or dysbiosis to occur. And I don't know if you ever experienced it, but after taking an antibiotic, you might have diarrhea for several days thereafter. That is essentially what is going on because the good biome has been completely disrupted and it takes time to sort of recover. And in situations where it's really bad, you can actually call, get something called Clostridium difficile or C. diff infection. It's a horrible infection to have. It can lead to significant um, health issues and even death possibly. C. diff is a quote unquote bad bacteria. And when you take antibiotics, it wipes it out. And the overwhelming majority of C. diff infections are actually due to antibiotic usage. When you get this infection, you actually have to take another antibiotic to wipe that out and the recurrence rate of C. diff infection is about 20 to 60 percent. In very bad situations, if you can't get it under control, it releases toxins and can cause something called toxic megacolon. And what that is, is basically it disrupts the lining of the intestines, leading to a complete dilatation or overgrowth of the colon. And I remember my uh, general surgery intern year, we actually did a case where the patient developed that, actually from C. diff, and we had to remove their colon, a significant part of it, and it was huge. Um, it was like the size of a large anaconda or something like that. And I'll never forget what that looked like. And you know, if you don't do that, um, it can be fatal for that patient. And in situations where people get recurrent infections from C. diff, they actually require what's called a fecal transplant. And that's exactly like what it sounds. You actually get a donor. So someone donates their poop and it gets tested. And by the way, this is the part where we're going to talk about poop a little bit more. Uh, it gets tested and to make sure that there's no bad bacteria in it. And they basically process it, uh, mix it in with saline, and that's actually injected um, into the patient. So you're literally injecting someone else's poop into you so that the good bacteria will hopefully colonize and sort of replace um, a lot of the bad bacteria and replace that and create that balance again within the gut biome. And lastly, what I was hoping to do in this video was also talk about things like probiotics or prebiotics, symbiotics, psychobiotics. <laughs> but this video would be way too long if I talked about all that. So I've decided to break that down into a part two video and I will cover all that at a later date uh, because it's an entire topic onto of itself. So make sure that you are subscribed, hit the notification bell. And again, if you like what you saw here, please hit the thumbs up, the like button so that the YouTube algorithm will push this video out to more viewers. But ultimately what I hope I've accomplished here with this video was basically tickle your brain into understanding and develop an interest in your body's forgotten organ, in your gut biome, and realizing just how important it is in your health and wellness long term, much like everything else that I talk about within this channel. And if you know a lot about all of this, uh, or feel like I left something out, please feel free to put it down below in the comment section, because this channel is all about sharing knowledge and making sure that we all live a healthier, wiser, healthier life through knowledge. And so until next time, take care, stay safe, bye-bye. Pura Vida.